My name is Felix Kunz. I'm going to walk you through some of the Ellen Chrome modifiers that I use in my day-to-day -day work. And I want to take away some of the confusion that you might find when you're shopping for a modifier on the Ellen Chrome website and you're presented with a lot of options and walk you through what's the difference between a small modifier, large modifier, deep, regular, um, and indirect, direct. I kind of make those options a little easier for you. The first thing I want to show you is the difference of how to tell what kind of light output you're going to get from a modifier. And there's actually a really easy way. So we're going to take some of the complications away. If you compare the shape on the side of these, you can clearly see this one's shallower, this one's deeper. So how does it affect the light? And it's not very complicated. Imagine you had a jet of water coming through where the light is going to be. And in this case, the light is mounted directly into the back here. The light's then spraying into this inside of the modifier. And I'll show you in a minute, you can see on the front we have a diffuser on there. So if you spray light, if you spray water, just as you kind of spray light, you're going to have it enter the modifier, distribute it around by that diffuser. If you didn't have a diffuser on, this jet of water would just come straight out the top. Maybe some would hit the sides. That's why we diffuse our lights so that water or the light is getting all over the place. And you'll know the difference between a shallow and a deep uh, modifier because the comparable thing is put a flat spoon or like a dinner spoon under a tap of water if you've ever done it and the water is coming out the faucet at any kind of speed you're going to get wet because the water just goes everywhere very wide so that's the equivalent of the wide modifier the light when it comes through here it ends up following the sides and splaying out in the direction that the sides are pointed at. You see that, like you're gonna get a very wide spread of light, just like that spoon. Whereas if you imagine filling a tulip-shaped object, like a glass of water, with water, because of its shape, it's gonna capture much more of that light. But imagine when it splays back out, like if you put a shot glass, that water is gonna come out much more at a focused kind of angle. And the same is true here, and you just have to look at the side and imagine it. The water is coming out at an angle like this. So the difference between the shallow modifiers, and this is the angle at which the light comes out. So that's the first step to imagining what the light is gonna do when you're using these different modifiers. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have my model Psi come in. I'm gonna show you kind of how I use one light and the little modifications I make. Before I actually start using it, I'm gonna show you what the inside of this is like. There we go, like ripping off a Band-Aid. We're gonna mount it onto the Ellen Chrome ELB 1200. ELB stands for Ellen Chrome Battery, and the 1200 is the power output of the unit, 1200 watts. We're gonna mount this onto the light. The light's gonna point into the modifier through the back, and then we have this first diffusion layer. So imagine the light is pointing through the inside, and as it hits this diffusion layer, a lot of it is bouncing back and filling this area of the modifier so you're already getting a little bit of a softer look on this. Then, as we add the outer diffusion layer, we're basically multiplying that effect. So we have a box in here, often it's called a soft box, because the light is just bouncing all over the place in this modifier and then coming out at that angle that I described. So that's how we get that soft light. Now there's one little modification here because this is a direct light. I'm gonna mount this on here. There we go. I'm gonna put the deflector on. Now this is not a halo. This is actually, you stick this in here. It comes in the box with the Ellen Chrome. You stick this in here and you cover the light. Now what that does is as the light comes through from the back of the modifier, this thing is a little bit see-through, but pretty much not at all. So the light is hitting this and bouncing back onto the back of the modifier. What you wanna do is you wanna get the light just going all over the place. So that's what we achieve by putting this in, in here. You see it covers. So you know when you get those hot spots on the model? So this helps to really minimize those hot spots that you get. Then you add in your inner baffle. Now these baffles are usually cut out about a stop of light. So they actually have, the fabrics have ratings. So you can buy, if you're using diffusion Ellen Chrome ones come at one stop, so each time we add one of these, the thickness of the fabric is described as one stop, so it cuts out one stop of light. Now, of course, because we're really creating kind of big chaos in here, the one stop 
it's just better to, you don't need to worry about what the stops are and what the power of the pack is. What I do is I point my modifier at the model and if it's too bright, I turn it down. If it's too dark, I turn it up. So I've now got three layers sort of diffusion. The first is it's bouncing into that dish, bouncing back into the back of the modifier, then it's coming up into that inner baffle, bouncing around in that area, then it finally gets to the front baffle, it bounces around a little bit more. So by now, we've got really smooth, beautiful, soft light. Now I wanna show you the effect of what, we're gonna walk through all the different sizes of modifiers, but what the small one does on the model's face. So you can see how we can use this to sculpt. What I usually do is I put the bottom of the modifier at the model's eye height, and that works really well for anyone under the age of 35 or someone that doesn't have like those deep eye caves because if you go a little bit higher, you're gonna get those shadows under the eyes. If you go a bit lower, you can have like that kind of demon-like light from below that looks like someone's, um, I don't know, lighting from below just kind of seems weird to me. So I put the bottom of the modifier at eye height. I bring it a little bit in front of the model and I always do this instead of pointing it directly at them, which is the first instinct, I want to catch the edges of that light where it's even softer. So I'm all about softness. If you follow me, you know this. So I'm going to point, the light is now pointing about here. That's about a foot and a half in front of Sai. You can see the front, the entire front of this, right? Good. All right, so let's take a test shot. I'm going to turn my light on. There we go. And I'm not even worrying about what is set on the on the light for power. I'm just gonna have a test shot. I've set my camera at ISO 100, five, aperture is 5.6 and my shutter speed is 180 per second. Obviously that's way too bright. So again, if it's too bright, I turn the pack down. If it's too dark, I turn the pack up. So I'm gonna go down a stop. I'm just gonna do another test shot. I'm tethered into my Capture One. And for those of you who've noticed, I'm shooting on my first Oliphant backdrop that I ever got and um, I just had to bring it for this because I love it so much. Good, so the exposure is good. I do use a light meter, but I want to keep it simple for this demonstration. So we're just going to stick with, if it's too dark, turn it up. If it's too bright, turn it down. So let's have a little quick walkthrough about what this light is doing. Because it's a little bit of a smaller modifier, we start to see the shadows are fairly strong. Now, I asked him if he was able to see the entire front of the modifier, because I'll show you a little trick. This is what I use for when I sit down and actually have a look at the light. But what I'm gonna have you do is I'm just gonna have you cover this eye with your hand and tell me, can you see all of this modifier? No, okay, good. So that's because it's a small modifier. We're only covering part of his face. And if he can't see it with his eye, the light isn't getting to that eye, if that makes sense. It's a very easy exercise. And if you don't know what I mean, just sit down when you have your light set up and just cover both eyes and you start to really get an idea of where that light is actually traveling. So the easiest way is just to look and it's not any more complicated than that. We've got really, really soft light, but because the light is fairly small, it's not that big, maybe that's probably about two feet you're not covering such a huge area on the model's face. So some of the little modifications you could do is you could bring this further around to the front, but again, I'm gonna get that very hard light. So I'm gonna just try that just to chin, point your nose here. Perfect. And let's have a look at that. And that's nice, but it, tend, it starts to be a little bit flat. The modification I'm gonna show you for the best way to use, that I use, one light, if I only have this, um, you know, we're already getting soft light out of here, but it's a little too small. So you could get dramatic lighting with this, is I'm gonna bring in a V-flat. And if you don't have V-flats, you probably have a white wall somewhere. So you stick your model next to the white wall. And now, the beautiful thing about this is using one light like this, you're using the fact that you feathered the light off the model, so you're not pointing at the model, this light is now pointing at the V-flat and it's bouncing back at him. So we can fill in those shadows and use the shape of the modifier. So remember, I talked about the lights playing out. So right now, the light's playing out in this direction and covering an area to about here. So it's actually perfect because by the time it gets here, 
were catching almost all of that light and bouncing it back at him. But he's in the outer edges of that light. That's how you get it to be really beautiful. It's one of those cheap little tricks that people ask me about and just resist the temptation to point the modifier directly at the model. Perfect, let's have a look at that. So as you can see, if I compare these two, on the right is the shot I just did. We're now getting beautiful, beautiful filled in shadows. This with one light, super easy setup. So the nice thing about this modifier is it fits into suitcases, it fits into rolling bags. So that's why I own this and that's why I use it in this fashion if I'm in a, in a pickle. So I wanna show you right away the difference between having that small 70 centimeter and then going to the 100 centimeter deep Rotolact Oxabox. We've set it up exactly the same way with that deflector inside, there's an inner baffle and there's an outer baffle. So all that's different is it's bigger. Literally, that's it. The shape is the same, the way the light comes out of it, it's bigger. So, in real world applications, this is what I start to use when I have two people. Or, let's say I want really soft light on one person. What makes it soft? The size makes it soft. Now, remember we had Sai cover his eye and tell us if he could see the light. So I'm gonna show you what happens when we put this in exactly the same place, point in exactly the same way, and the difference that the size makes. So we were about here. And again, I'm feathering the light off of him so it's not hitting him. Maybe I can come actually a little bit closer. Let's see. I move this stand. There we go. The bottom of this is just about at eye height. Maybe come up a little bit so we approximate the same thing. So, because this is now covering a larger area, Sai, go ahead and cover your eye again and tell me if you can see a little bit of that. As we get a bigger modifier, more of that light, if he can see it with his eye, the light is hitting that eye. And that means it's hitting this more of this side of the face. So as we start to get into his cheekbones and all of that, as you get a larger modifier, some of the light, it's spreading further. That's all the big light is doing. That's why it gets soft. So it's really super simple as to why. So let me shoot a, a picture to give you an idea and we'll have a little comparison on the screen. Now, I'm probably gonna have to turn the pack up. As there's more distance for the light to travel, we're gonna need to put out a little bit more power in the pack. So I'll probably go up, let me see, I'm just gonna estimate half a stop. Let's see how that looks. And I'm just, again, if it's too bright, I would turn it down. Let's have a look. So, if you look at this image in detail, and I'm gonna zoom in here and you can see the screen grab. You can start to see if you look here, and remember this is, there's no V-flat on this now. So what we're getting is some of that soft light kind of wrapping around the other side of his face over here. The shadows aren't quite as harsh and we'll probably actually have a benefit because we've moved this in a little bit closer. But you imagine the light that's coming out of this. So I'm gonna move that back and try that. But the light that's coming out of this is, is splaying out at a much broader angle than the previous one, which ended up only about here. And that's something that you can just visualize if you look directly at the modifier. There's not, you don't need to get more complicated than that. So let's try that. I've moved it away a little bit. I wanna see the comparison. There you go, we get a little bit more shadowy, but you can see that the shadows are actually a little bit less and a little bit softer here as well. And here on the nose, let's have a look right there on that shadow on the nose, you can see on the left here, it's a little bit harder than the one on the right. So that's what starts to happen as you have a bigger modifier, also under the lips. That line that cuts where the shadow goes from where the shadow is to where the highlight is, that line, it just gets softer. So even though there's still shadow, because the light is bigger, that's all becoming softer and the same effect applies when you go to a bigger modifier. So let's compare how that looks when I add the V-flat in for the bounce. So I'm gonna grab it, put the white side towards him again, in about the same place. And let's do a test shot with that. Perfect. And I'm gonna compare that to, see when we had the 70 centimeter deep with the 100, there we go. I'm gonna just deselect this one. So, you start to see, again, we're gonna look at those shadows on the side of the nose here, and this is, it gets subtle. 
which is the whole point. You're adding, you know, when you do these, when you're using these modifiers, you're adding percentages to your work. And when you understand these little subtleties, that's how you get that work that makes your clients go, okay, there's just something about your work. What's the difference? So that's what I always try to achieve. So if you look at the shadows here, both on the side of the nose and under the lip here, you can see that this shadow is actually much softer. And that's what we get from having that slightly bigger modifier. So that light is just kind of filling in. So if you imagine what he's doing when he's covering his eye and seeing if he can see some of the light. When he covers his eye, he sees that extra little strip that he couldn't see before. That's those extra 30 centimeters that we're getting from the light. And that starts to fill in those edges. So you can imagine as the modifier gets bigger, how that changes it. So we're getting those shadows get softened up. That's one of those things that why I like to use larger modifiers. And again, we've got the deflector in there, we've got the inner baffle, we've got the outer baffle, so that's making it a really, really soft light by the time it exits the front there. So this with the V-flat, you start to see it becomes much softer and these angles become really flattering. Now the beautiful thing about a deeper modifier is the light still has direction because it's coming out at this angle, there's still direction to it. When I'm gonna show you next the wide, uh, the shallow modifier, it has less direction because the light's kind of splaying out really widely. So you're getting light kind of coming from everywhere. This has directionality. So if you imagine the sun diffused through clouds, it still comes from one direction. It still comes from a spot in the sky. You can always tell, unless you live in England, you can always tell where the light is coming from. So that's the same idea. You have direction, but it's still soft. That's what makes these deep dish modifiers really my favorites. You can get light that just looks like soft but directional at the same time, it's really quite incredible. So I'm going to put the shallow modifier on our light now. Same thing, we're going to put that um, diffuser in there. There's two levels of diffusion and that little translucent dish that makes everything really soft. But I want to demonstrate kind of the difference and I'm going to stick with my 100 centimeter deep Rotolux and I'm going to show you. We're already shooting on the edge of it. If you remember, we're kind of feathered. He's getting that feathered light. I want you to see, oh, this is perfect shot there. Um, as I turn this away from the model, so we'd be super feathered. So just nod when you can't see this anymore, like the front of this. No, just look at it. Just look at it here when you can't see this anymore. Is that right here? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna, this is the most feathered you could ever use this light. He's just getting the very, very edge. If he can't see the front of it, none of that light is hitting him. So I'm show you, gonna show you how that looks and it actually looks nice. So you can use this really, really feathered light. You need a lot of power in your light. I would have to turn it up. What I'm trying to show you is the difference between when we do this with this modifier versus when we do it with the shallow modifier. Because the light from the shallow modifier splays out so much further, we're gonna be able to uh, feather so much more. So instead of talking about it, I'm gonna show you, but that really is the biggest difference. You're gonna get such more feathered light that distributes much broader. If you imagine in your mind's eye, if it was water, it would be spraying everywhere, but the same amount of water would be distributed over a wider area. So if we, this is actually now pointing almost exactly at my laptop, so that's gonna be my reference point. So just bear with me while I change this over. We're covering the same area, so I'm in the same place now. Actually, one little thing I'm gonna do is because this is not as deep, the other one was much deeper, so the front of the other modifier was probably about here. So I actually should and will move this light about here and we'll try the same thing. And I'm just gonna double check again. Sai, just cover your eye and tell me if you can see any of this with your other eye. Can you? Okay, good. And I'm just gonna move it in just a tiny bit. I think that's about the same place where we were before. So let me take that reference shot. Good. And that actually looks really nice and soft. It's a little brighter, and that's because the interior volume of this, there's not as much space for the light to bounce around, so the light's coming out the front is a little bit brighter. So I'm just gonna turn it down maybe one third of a stop, so three tenths or four tenths. Let's try it. Perfect. And that looks good. So again, we have that similar light quality. If you look really closely at the files, which we can do in a minute, um, they're probably going to be a little bit softer. It's going to have that quality like maybe it's a larger window that we're using just because from here you can imagine the light is splaying out 
really widely. So where that makes the big difference and what I use this shallow modifier for is when I really want to feather the light a lot. So I'm going to feather it off and side, just nod or confirm. You can still see so much of the front of that, right? But what's actually happening is because we've got the light coming kind of at an angle, whereas on the deep one, it would be coming across like this. This just gives you that maybe 20 degrees more of an angle where the light is really coming out wide. And when I shoot that now, I'm probably gonna have to turn up my power on the pack, but when I shoot that, we get that really those really soft edges of the light. And this is primarily what I use a shallow modifier for. It's really flattering to get in those soft edges of the light, and you see that here as well on the shot. I'm gonna turn the light up maybe half a stop, because obviously we're losing a lot of that light because we're so far feathered. And that's almost, let's see, we can go a little further. I want it pointing at my laptop over here. Perfect. And that looks really good. Yeah, and you see, you can see if I compare these two shots here, the one on the left, we were pointing a little more towards him, and the one on the right is even more feathered. So you can see we lose that little bit of light each time. Let me see if I can compare it to the really feathered shot, if that's a viable comparison. So you see, with this feathered light, we probably have the same similar quality of light, but you can feather so much more and you get that those really soft edges. If we go in here and have a look at those shadows, those shadows, there's always gonna be a shadow, but it's the gradient between the dark part of the shadow to the light part of the shadow. If you look here under the lip specifically and in, the, um, in that pocket here next to his nose, so those shadows are really gonna get much softer. Now, how does this apply when you don't have a 20-something model in front of your camera? Well, people with wrinkles, you can start to understand if you get those shadows to be really soft, their wrinkles aren't as pronounced. So, whereas if you cast your mind back to when we used the first small modifier, it was very directional, we go to this, we're already in so much of a softer place, just because the front of the modifier is larger, and now we're in that really soft area at the side of the side of the light. So, by the way, the, the shallow is also really nice if you're pointing it directly at somebody. However, you do get pretty much the same effect as you have from the front of the deeper Rotolux. I'd say the deeper Rotolux feels more directional, whereas this one feels like it's splaying out more. But the real place where these t this shines in relation to the deep one is when you're really, really feathered and just catching the edge of that beautiful light. So let's move right ahead and get onto the indirect modifiers. Now, what does direct versus indirect mean? In the other modifiers you've seen so far, the light's pointing through the back and then directly through. So we use the deflector to soften it, the inner baffle to soften it, and the outer baffle to soften it. One of the things that gets great when you get to the bigger modifiers is they have indirect mounts. Sounds more complicated than it is. All it means is the light mounts into the inside in a direction pointing into the back of the modifier, so the light travels indirectly. Now, before I move on to that, for those of you guys that shoot with the smaller heads for the ELB 400, which is the lights that I love to use, um, it has a little adapter, adapter ring. Because they're so small, they need a mount that makes it the size of these guys. So same thing applies, you mount them in here just the same. Now, the light is bouncing directly at this silver disc and then onto this donut, as I like to call it. I'm sure there's a technical name that'll appear just here in the screen at any moment for this little piece, although it comes with it. And you'll see that these guys, because the light's not mounted from behind, you don't want a cable trailing through the front, there's the little zip pocket or a Velcro pocket that the light, that the cable goes through and you thread it through there. So that's, that makes it super neat and tidy. Now, because this, the bulb is exposed here, you know, you didn't have any dish or anything on that bulb, the light's hitting this little disc, but it's also very harshly hitting this part of the modifier here. So what this does is it already makes it softer. So by the time the light hits back here and comes back to the front, 
we've already gotten to a very soft place. Then, ta-da, we put in the inner baffle. And again, that counts out probably about one stop of light. So you imagine the light's now traveled back here. It's already soft. And you actually get quite a different quality of light from the indirectly mounted modifiers. And if you've got trouble with people who have very sweaty skin or very like kind of wet skin and you want that to be soft as you've seen in a lot of fashion magazines, the indirect way is the way to go. Now, it's not only softer because it's indirect, but remember we're also going onto these larger modifiers. So that makes a difference there as well. So you're really, what Ellen Crumb's done and they pioneered this is getting those really, really soft modifiers. Large, indirect mounts built incredibly well. So we have our front baffle here, same thing as the other ones. It's gonna be the, the reason I talked earlier about, oh, these are usually one-stop fabrics, is that's true throughout the whole range. So you know where you're getting at, what you're getting when you put these on. So for example, sometimes people have this problem where their light's too bright. I get this all the time. Oh, I have a small studio. I can't turn my light down enough. What you can do is get an extra one of these. And when you put it on your light, you're literally cutting out a stop. Ellen Chrome sells these as accessories. Just get the front baffle for um, your modifier. And I always do that. We're not gonna do that today because it's obviously soft enough. But if I wanna cut out more light, if your light's too powerful, that's why it's great to know that this is a stop of light that's being cut out because you put it on, you're losing a stop, and suddenly your light is not too powerful anymore. I know there's some people who want to shoot with their aperture wide open in the studio. So the easy solution is the LB400, you can turn it all the way down. If you don't have that, you're using anything else that you can't turn down, put extra diffusion on the front. Bed sheet's fine, but you know, if you're doing a paid client job, you want to look smart. I don't think taking your dirty bed sheets is gonna be that impressive. So, same idea, similar distance from the subject, and you can see on the side of the modifier here, the shape. Now, the small, if you remember, oh, actually, let me just grab the small direct modifier, and it's kind of hard to see, but the shape of this larger one, it splays out just a tad more, so it's not as directional as these. So, you're getting that soft quality. You can also get modifiers that are more focused, but I think the build of this makes a really, really beautiful light. So it's just not quite as tulipy as these. So it's a tulip that's maybe open by another five degrees or so. So I'm gonna put the bottom of this modifier at eye height. Again, perfect, good. And you can see the cable comes out the back, makes it nice and neat, good. And again, I've got a larger modifier, so I'm probably gonna have to turn that light up, but I'm just gonna see first how it looks in the camera. So let's have a look. And that's actually not so bad. So this is where we get into that world where it really starts to have that like fashion look, beautiful, soft light. Now, we are now perpendicular to the model. So Simon is here, Sai is here, sorry. And the light is right here going across the front of him. So he's getting most of the light on this side of his face. And you can see that in the picture on the screen. So, what I start to do here with these larger modifiers to really get the most out of them is I'm going to move the light further away from the model. And this is, this is what I do instead of, if I, if I really wanted to spread the light across him more, one of the things that everyone does, let's say we're in closer here, is they just point the light directly at the model. Most of the time it's fine, but it just kind of gives you a flatter, not so moody light. I like it to be a little bit moody and it feels a little bit too commercial, too clean for me. So instead of doing that, I keep my feathered position. So that means the light's now pointing still at that V flat across from me. I move the light further away from the model and then I still point it at the V flat. So it's still not pointing at him. It's still focused in a point about two feet in front of his face but it's feathered. So by moving it forward and coming across a little bit, we're keeping that feathered quality of the light. And let's see how that is, how that looks on, on Sai over here. Good, and I think we'll have 
really, really soft, beautiful shadows. And the thing I like about this, and rather than putting lights on both sides, is I keep the shape of the face, but my shadows stay soft. So I have shape in the face because the light is directional, but because he's got this giant modifier in front of him, everything's super soft. So again, if we do this exercise where you cover that eye, so you should now see a lot more of this, right? And that's by moving it forward and then feathering it, that's the quality that we're getting. So we're getting a lot of that light is starting to come almost in front of him. So when he covers his eye, he can see a lot of it from this side as well. So we're getting a good spread. Now I'm gonna show you how this looks if I take the V-flat away, because it will be softer than any of the images we've shot without a V-flat so far. So I'll take this away. I'll take a reference shot. Good. And that's really nice and soft. And these gradients, they come, they come across really nicely. Now, I, in fashion, it's quite modern to keep those highlights in. And the difference between a highlight and a burn, if you look here on the screen, is this isn't burnt out. It just shows that there's a reflection. This can be quite useful for adding interest um, in the skin. A burn is like a really bright uh, white patch. So now this is where I get really excited when I use these modifiers. This 150 centimeters, it's huge. It's a beautiful soft box. And I've already got soft light without bringing that V-flat in. So if you don't have a V-flat, this is where I would start. You're not gonna be able to get this light with the small modifiers unless you want that hard to find light which is okay, I love my soft light. So, as I do this, I can now start using V-flats in a completely different way, and I'm gonna show you how I do that, is I can start bringing in negative fill. So I'm gonna open up the black side, and for men especially, I can really shape the side of the face on the other side. Let me see how that looks. By doing the exact same thing, instead of Adding bounce, we're cutting out bounce completely. So now, if you look, and this is what makes this so magic once you start getting into these indirect larger modifiers, we have, we've defined the shape on his face here, but we still have a really soft shadows in the rest of his on the rest of his face. So, Sai, if you just point your chin slightly towards the light here. Yeah, perfect. Just adjust my tripod, I'm getting get the focus just right, perfect. Just by having him move his face, we can really start to have everything filled in. So if you're shooting someone with wrinkles, if you're doing this, just have them cheat their chin towards the light and everything fills in. You can define the face. For men, what I usually do is I put the black bounce behind them and that's just gonna make this edge on the side here kind of defined and we're gonna get a nice, um, Kind of like a little bit of definition as if you're dodging and burning over on that edge. And it works really nicely. So you start to see we have really beautiful soft light coming across. If you look at this shadow again below here, below his, let me show you that. Below his lips, it's a soft gradient and we're defining the side of his light here. So when people ask me, what is it that you do that makes the light just have that little bit of something extra. Well, I'm not gonna lie. Once you get to these larger modifiers, there's just so much more you can do because you're already starting with soft light. If you did this, put the black V-flat on this side and had the uh, small deep dish Rotolux, you're gonna struggle with making it look soft and beautiful, defined, and not so crass and contrasty. We're gonna go one step bigger so we're gonna bring in the 190 light motif. It's even bigger than this one. And it's got a similar idea. We're gonna end up with softer, bigger light. And now I should have, let's have a look here on the magical laptop. That's beautiful. So we've got one light that's doing so much. There's no V flat here. We do have white walls in the studio, but they're quite far away. So I'm not thinking about that too much. Um, but this is beautiful, soft light. And I'm just gonna show you the difference this makes Let's go back to where I was just before. If I bring this back more perpendicular and next to him like it was. Remember I made that small change. Let's see how that is. And it'll just feel ever so slightly more sidey, I suppose we could call that. 
yeah, the light just feels kind of like from the side. So it's a great exercise for any photographer. Go home and no matter what modifiers you have, start doing this in the studio. Start making small adjustments and seeing the differences. This is how I learned this stuff. I made small changes, tried it out. Small changes, try it out. Try it out on yourself because you know what you look like and you can really identify those changes when you light test on yourself. So this is really nice. If we look at that shadow again, the shadow under the um, lip, of course, it's still soft, but the more important shadow to look at when we get to larger modifiers is the shadow next to the nose here. And we've got almost no hard shadow at all because light is still hitting him on this side of the nose from this. It's really soft. Um, but if you didn't have a shadow there, if you put a light on the other side, you just have this really flat image with no contrast. So we've still got kind of that interplay of light and dark really defining his face. So from here, I'm gonna bring in the white V-flat, but unlike last time, I'm gonna have it open to the white side. You know why I'm using the larger V-flat for this? Because our light is doing this, splaying out to this larger size, whereas the small one was only splaying out to the small size and then bouncing back at him. So if I had more, an even bigger modifier or had two next to each other, I would put two of these next to each other and get like a eight foot, 16 foot wall of black bounce back. So. Remember, this is a one light setup, so I wanna get rid of this idea in photography that the more lights you have, the better it is. No, you can do a one light setup and do it beautifully. And no, you don't need V-flats. You have a wall in your apartment or your garage or wherever, paint it white. Hang some white bed sheets, put something reflective, put the model closer to the wall. If you don't have V-flats, you gotta move your model instead of moving the V-flats and your lights. But this is gonna give us the softest light we've ever seen that still has definition without getting rid of that directionality, without getting rid of that like face shape. You know, it doesn't get so, so boring. So here, look at how much his face has still got definition. We still see his cheekbones. We still have those shadows, but this light is absolutely soft. If I move the V-flat away a little bit, I'm gonna stick it behind here. We can literally control how much light we're bouncing back and forth. So this is gonna be a little less bright on this side, on the right here, and there you go. You see that directly. So this is the little things you can do, and it's so powerful to just get one of these modifiers and make these adjustments. I wanna point out, if you have a small studio, you have to use the smaller modifiers. The shallow modifiers, the smaller ones, are great for small studios and low ceilings because they'll actually pop further into those ceilings. So this, it's not as deep as some of the other ones. This one's actually fairly shallow. I wouldn't call it, um, you know, if you have eight foot ceilings, you might struggle with this, but the shallow modifier that I showed you, which isn't called the shallow on the website, it's just the normal one, it's great for those kind of lower ceilings and you're really gonna get soft light. So I wanna now take this to the point where we shoot a real shoot. Sai is actually a dancer, so he's agreed very graciously to do some dancing for us and I'm gonna shoot it. And I'm gonna use this modifier, my favorite, it's so soft, and the 75 centimeter deep Ellen Chrome Octobox, just to show kind of the comparison and what the differences are between those. Um, if I was shooting him now here for a portrait for real, the next modification I would make is start changing the shape of the face, have him um, face in different directions. But for now, I think this is a really good demonstration. So. Let's go ahead and shoot. Size undergone a stars in their eyes transformation into a dancer. Um, and we've put up a thunder gray paper seamless because my olifant isn't nine foot wide. We had this in the studio, so I can have side dancing around and not worry about cutting them off the backdrop. So that's why I'm doing this um, this way. The light motif is in exactly the same place, exactly the same power. I've put, in anticipation, I've put three panels of B-flats up to bounce the big light back over towards him. And I'm just gonna start here. Same power as I was in the previous portrait segment and same position. So side just stay sta uh, static for now. Let's see. So I'm gonna walk you through my thought process as I build this setup with one light. Good. So if you look here over the screen, we have several things that are happening. We have, I think he's well-defined. His body's got good definition, which is one of the things I'm looking for. 
Um, but we have this issue with the backdrop really kind of having this shadow. Now, that's because the light, as it splays out from the modifier, isn't hitting. So that's too feathered. Where you see the light on the picture starting is the edge of the feather. So what do we do? Remember, similar idea, we could come forward and bring the light in, but what I'm actually gonna do, because I can get away with a little bit more sidey light, like we had at the beginning, because we're not doing a portrait, I'm gonna bring this further to the side, hence the sidey. We're still shooting on the 190 light motif, and I'm gonna, my idea is to get Sai to do some jumps. So we're gonna be up way higher. We don't have to worry so much about the eyes on this. I taught you guys that in the previous segment, but I'm gonna come up taller anyway on the stand. Let's see how far we can go. And obviously you're gonna have problems if your ceilings are lower, but then you're also not gonna have a dancer dancing. But before I actually do that, let's see how it is. I'm gonna make one more modification, I'm sure of it, but let's see how that changed it. Size perfectly static there, that's great. Good, so we've changed the angle, there we go. It's now much more sidey, we're still getting light bouncing back on those V-flats, and we've gotten rid of the shadow on this side over here. So I'm happy with where that is so far, but I'm gonna apply my feathering concept to three dimensions. So, I'm gonna bring this back down. And what I mean by three dimensions is, so far, we feathered it like this and like this. And what I'd like to do is also use the dip and what, what you know, the ship goes each in three, three ways on the, on, a, on the ocean. So I'm gonna bring this and angle it down a little bit. That gives us a little bit more direction from the top. Then I'm gonna feather it off and bring this back up. And because I feathered it and I've taken it further away from the model, let's see if this goes up higher. And I'm gonna turn it up a stop. Let's just do that. That doubles the light, good. So the other thing is now my light's pointing here. So my V-flats are almost a little bit in the wrong place. So I'm gonna move my equipment cart. This is where having a large space to shoot in is great. If you don't, Use your walls. So if you have magnolia painted walls, paint them white. You don't want off-white, you want white because off-white colors are gonna give you a color cast. If you don't have V-flats and you wanna get some, you get them at hardware stores. And I made a video on YouTube, just type Felix Kuhn's V-flats and you can see how I made these. All right, everyone ready? Okay, Sai, let me just do one more shot of you static there, perfect. But I'm shooting from a lower angle because I want to kind of get the action. Good, so let's have a look between these two, the things that have changed. It's much more sidey, but the shadow isn't as strong on this side of his face because we've got those V-flats now in the right position. So they're really catching that light and bouncing it back to him. The light motif is feathered quite a lot. However, and we're getting a little bit of that um, shadow up here, I don't mind it, some people might really hate it, and we can just fix it by angling this ever so slightly. We'll bring it forward and we angle it in ever so slightly. That means I don't have to move the V-flats because the light's still shining in it, and we're getting that spread of light, and we should have a little bit more cover on the gray here. I don't, if I get the gray to be so perfectly lit, it just starts to all look boring to me and have less um, character, so, I wouldn't mind this kind of thing. Good. It gives it a little bit of shape up there. We could get all more technical about it, but I'm not gonna right now. Good. So Sai, um, let's do a, I showed him a reference for a jump, so let's just go in and go ahead and shoot that. Let's have a look. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Perfect. Let's see if my timing's any good. And there we go, that's really nice. So can you do that with the other leg? This way, so that, um, because then we have your face in the part. Yeah, okay, ready? One, two, three. Very nice, good. Now, one of the things I want you to look at in this picture is we have so much definition in his body. And that's achieved by feathering the light. It's soft, but directional. That's one of those things that people are like, how do you do that? 
this is how we do it. We have directional light because we're using one light, we're not killing our shadows with fill light, and we're bouncing in with the V-flats. So now that I do this and I have him jumping up there, that gray area on the top right of the backdrop is bothering me a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this in the same direction, just away a little bit. And as I do that, because it's further away, I have to turn up my light. I've gone up half a stop, let's see how that looks. Again, if it's too bright, I would turn it down. All right, so let me just do a static shot first. Good, thank you, Sai. Good, it's probably a little bright now, so I'm gonna feather it off just a tad, like inches, like an, I'm moving it an inch, and I'm gonna turn the pack down two tenths of a stop as well. Let me try that. Good, and Sai, as you stand there, just face me straight on, put your shoulders square to me. Perfect, I want you guys to see what happens as we move the model in this light, because he's gonna get, we're gonna start seeing definition. Okay, turn yourself ever slightly more this way. Good, and just give me that tension in the stomach. So, we can really play with our shadows here, and we've just given him an even stronger six pack just by doing that. Right, and that makes every model very happy. It would make me happy if someone gave me a six pack. Good. All right, so let's do the jump again, Sai, and uh, just stay central in the frame, because our frame isn't that wide. Yeah, perfect. Ready? One, two, three. Good, very nice. Okay, that's great. Let's um, look up towards that part of the room. You don't need to look at the camera, and just start the jump a tiny bit later, like another two feet over. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Yes! Beautiful, okay, let's do it one more time. You can still, you still have another foot. I appreciate you trying to be on the set. That makes me very happy. Okay, one, two, three. Yes, but we got it. Perfect, that's great. And keep your head maybe into the top corner at the back there, yeah. Good. This is about the definition in your back and how far you can bend. Um, and just, I shoot a lot of dancers, so keep that back foot pointed. Yeah, perfect. Ready? One, two, three. Yes, good. Very nice. Very nice, good. So this really shows the capabilities of the light. Let's, should we do one from the front? And then we'll move on to the small modifier. So there's like a kind of sacrificial backwards, yeah, exactly. And the hand just comes across, very gently across the front, yeah. Okay, this one's not gonna be as complicated. Ready, one, two, three. Okay, and then combine that with the, just the tiniest little jump there. Okay, ready, one, two, three. Yeah, it's actually very nice. Good, so what's happening here, so this is a little adjustment I make, although that's very nice, is we're getting a lot of light directly on his stomach. So this is where feathering is gonna be really important to me. So I'm too lazy now to change the V-flats. So what I'm gonna to do to get more feathering, I'm still gonna point it over at those V-flats. I'm gonna bring it here. And as I do that, the light turns to stay pointing at the V-flats and apparently has a mind of its own. There we go. Whereas I was pointed this way before, now I'm pointed at those V-flats over there. Good, so I've achieved more feathering and I don't have to move the V-flats and I'm probably not gonna change the power output either. So we're kind of coming around behind him more and because he's turned towards the light, I, don't, I wanna minimize that kind of big broad light on his chest. Let's try that one more time, Sai. One, two, three. Yeah, beautiful. That's very nice. That's really great. Good, so we're starting to get more of that definition. So what I'd like you to do, come more at a diagonal towards, yes. Yeah, not as far, that, yeah, perfect. So that your body, your body is almost pointing here. And would you stand quickly where you're gonna be when you do the jump so I can, I'll lock the focus in, lovely. And then that's where you jump, okay. Good, ready? One, two, three. Good, oh, that looks great. Really nice, okay, so should we just do a few of those for fun? And just do one kind of almost from the back directly towards me, yeah. One, two, three. Yeah, perfect, good. That's beautiful. So for the sake of comparison, this is where we're at with the light motif. I'm gonna get in the, um, 
the 75 centimeter deep Rotolux and shoot the same thing with this. I'm gonna try approximate the same position and we're gonna see what I predict. We're gonna have much more of that halo on the backdrop that we already see here that I kind of like with this because it's a soft shadow. But with this, when we go to the smaller modifier, I think the gradation on the backdrop is gonna become harder. And we're gonna have more of that focused light, much more moody. He probably is gonna have much more of a six pack. So it can work for him. I like the soft light but let's just see how it looks. I've got the 70 Deep Rotolux. I think I've called it the 75 by mistake a couple times. Um, it's in the same place as the 190 was. So I think it's gonna be a little less soft. So let's have a look and see, and let's do a comparison. All right, so just a static shot. Oh, that sounds good. All right, so we have deeper shadows but somehow they don't have that nice soft quality. Let's look at his face in particular. We have a lot of shadow going on on this side. Let's compare it to the shot that we did in the same fashion from the previous modifier. Let's have a look. And yeah, if we zoom in here. So you see this has, this is the um, 190. This is where we were. And as we go over here, we're at the, this is with the 70 and you can see those highlights are much stronger. The shadows are much stronger. It's much less soft. It's not bad. So you can see what we can do even with a soft modifier like this because it is soft even though it's smaller, but it's quite far away from the subject. So the light has a chance to spread out and bounce into those V-flats and come back. So let's just run through the same poses and for the sake of comparison. But the main thing here, this is subtle differences. So I don't want someone to go, oh, I don't have the 190 and that's why I can't get soft light. We're getting pretty soft light with the small, really travel handy, 70 centimeter deep Rotolux. And you can do so much with so little. So let's do the, the, backwards, the backwards one where you ran in from the right of the set. One, two, three. If we compare the shadow between this one and the large light motif. Let's see if we can find the same shot. You can see this is actually a really great demonstration of the difference between those two. You see the top right here on the small modifier and the shadow is much, comes in much faster versus the soft shadow we have over here. And the shadows also become harder on the smallest modifier because smaller light is always going to be harder. But it's not hard light. It's still soft light, it's really directional. It's still, those shadows, this is, I would call this a soft shadow. Rather, if you're just using the bulb, you're gonna get like that really hard outline that you don't want. So this still works really nice and I think it actually has one benefit of defining his back even more. Okay, let's shoot a few more and just nail this pose. One, two, three. Beautiful, good. I think we've nailed it, so I think we can move on to the front pose, okay. Front pose, you got it. Let me just get where you're gonna jump so I can get the focus. Perfect, one, two, three. Yes, very nice, good. And do it more towards me so we get more of an angle. So again, we're getting that hard light a little bit. I would probably feather off or I can just have him turn himself a little bit more towards me. And you know what? Your jump doesn't actually have to be as high. I think you can just do a much softer jump, make it a little bit more you know, sacrificial body language, kind of very open and back. Yeah? Yes, exactly. Okay, one, two, three. Yes, that's nice. I, I think this jump can feel like a rehearsal rather than the perfect thing, okay? Okay, one, two, three. Yes, very nice. Good, perfect. And then, again, this is a good demonstration. If you look at the shadow here, right under his arm, it's much harder because we have that much smaller light source, but we still got a beautiful soft quality. For your clients, they would never notice this kind of thing. I think if we look at this as photographers, we're really seeing those differences. And a lot of times if you're shooting fashion or you're looking in fashion magazines, those hard shadows, they really play into what you're trying to do anyway. So that's what I would use a small modifier for. You know, sculpting faces really hard. For men, getting those shadows on the side of the face, kind of making it moody, making it dramatic. When we get to the bigger light sources, they're more forgiving for people who are maybe a little further along in their life. Anyone with wrinkles, double chins, 
that kind of thing, we get to soften all those things out. So these are the differences between the modifiers and you can really choose what you're gonna do by using different modifiers. So I hope that helps you make some of these choices. I wanted also to show you how I use these things. And um, thank you, Sai, it was great. And um, let me know how it goes.